Okay, here we are uh, at Pearl Beach with democracy author Klaus Waldring and we're discussing the current situation in Central Coast Council and uh, what some of our current leaders um, think about the administration period ahead. Klaus, how do you read the current situation for Central Coast Council? The elected body has been suspended and uh, an inquiry, a public inquiry, has been called. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I, I would say um, it was, of course, amazing to everybody that there was such a shortfall of funds all of a sudden and that the council didn't know about this. But since then, of course, there has been uh, an inquiry by uh, Dick Person, I think. And from what I have read in the papers, and uh, your papers particularly, it's, it seems to me that uh, it, is, uh, it was a fulsome inquiry and, and basically there, there was mismanagement, budgetary mismanagement, he, he describes it. So um, I, I think it's very sad that that has happened. But my, my first uh, inclination is to say, why? Uh, did we have this amalgamation and who is responsible? And, and then uh, you, you c I remember, you know, that people talked about this, how good this would be and it would be a saving and mm. all that. Uh, but basically, the people have not been asked if they wanted uh, al amalgamation. And, and I would think, you know, in terms of democracy, that would be the first thing to do. So people sort of know, we would like to combine these two, uh, two uh, councils uh, for uh, certain reasons. And what do you think about it? Mm. Yes or no? Mm. Uh, that has not happened. So uh, I think uh, that, was, that is a fundamental flaw uh, of, uh, in terms of democracy. Now that that amalgamation was, um, was voted on uh, slim lines by the two council laws at the time, both Wyong and Gosford, and they were uh, convinced apparently by the uh, state government to uh, to agree with an amalgamation. So, in one form, their elected councillors did uh, did agree to it, uh, although it seemed to have um, come across them very quickly. What are your thoughts about that? Well, uh, that may be so, but uh, I think this is a, a, a very important decision uh, that should have been put to the uh, to the people, to the citizens of the Central Coast. And um, the, the, the other thing is, of course, that um, um, the, uh, the, the, the idea of, of uh, having a council, uh, a larger council, and a very large council mm. in itself mm. is questionable. Mm. Because I think the essence of local government in terms of democracy is that people have a connection mm. uh, with the government at the local level. And uh, this is now the sixth largest council in, in Australia. And you ask yourself, you know, where is this connection? So I would say that a council of this size is simply too big. The, uh, the argument now, of course, is uh, there are no operational councillors. They're all suspended and their duties are set aside. So effectively now, um, out of some necessity, it would appear that we don't have any councillors for the community to speak to. And it would appear that this is going to be um, a case for, for perhaps three years. Uh, is this the sort of result that do you think administration um, uh, will help solve? No, I, 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 I have a feeling that it's not going to be solved. And certainly if you say that this could last for three years, mm. Is, uh, is ridiculous. I, I've heard uh, people uh, talking about the public interest and democracy. And it's my view that the public interest is generated by democracy, by a proper democracy. That's where it comes from. It's mm. not from some elite group or, or you know, you would almost think of a, a communist system uh, where, where the top decides what is good for the people. Mm. So it seems to me that uh, three, three, uh, three years, uh, that's absolutely ridiculous, I would say. I, what I would like to see is that at the, at the next uh, council elections in September of this year, that this matter is put to the, to the citizens of the Central Coast in a referendum or a plebiscite and where they can have their say, which they should have had in the first place. 
Well, it would appear by uh, the reports the public inquiry triggered by the local government minister uh, or the, the administrator's report and the local government minister, Shelley Hancock, uh, this week has said that the public inquiry will take up to a year and therefore um, elections will be suspended in September um, uh, until the inquiry has finished. So it would appear that um, at the moment we'd, we won't have any elections at all. Uh, what are your thoughts of that? Uh, wrong. Mm. Sorry. Um, the, we see a decline in democracy in several Western countries and also other countries and I think it's up to the people to stop this decline and to say this we do not agree with. Uh, so um, what you're telling me here that we can have, uh, you know, three years without council, local council, I think this is, uh, this is further decline of democracy. That is what it is. And I think, uh, I hope that your paper and, uh, and a lot of people uh, in, on the Centre Coast are taking an interest and say, well, we've heard enough. Now let's let us have our say. Now the administrator, who was the um, who was the interim CEO, uh, uh, Rick Hart, um, seems to have a grip on the financial situation and, and seems to have helped um, get the uh, the books um, back in balance. But on the question of uh, feedback from the community. Uh, the council meetings now are very different where there's, there's one administrator in place and uh, the decisions come up through the executive. My question is what, what will be lost by a lack of uh, connection with uh, council through councillors? Well, it's a, it's a loss to democracy and, and, and a loss to local input. Mm. Um, and. Um, I, I, I think this, we are moving in the wrong direction and it seems to me um, that the pandemic has, uh, has, has resulted in a lot of people making uh, suggestions of major change in various things. And I th it seems to me that this, the, the governance systems in Australia generally require a major change. Uh, I was hoping actually that this would come about as a result of the ALP um, getting uh, onto this bandwagon of change. Mm. But unfortunately, what I've seen thus far, I've been listening to the, um, to the national forum, to the uh, policy forum a few weeks ago, and basically there, there was nothing there that sort of suggested that um, the Labour Party gets this. Mm. You know? so, so here we have two parties a two major adversarial party system that is allowing democ democracy to disappear in Australia. This is what's happening and I'm sorry, I think the people should say no way. The, uh, the locally, to go back locally, um, both the, uh, the parliamentary secretary for the Central Coast um, agrees with the current trajectory with the, 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 uh, the administration, the public inquiry and also the Shadow Minister for the Central Coast, uh, David Harris, um, in statements, also agrees with the inquiry and the delay of democratic elections. Uh, is that a reflection of what you're talking about? Yes, here? it is. Hmm. It is a reflection of this. Uh, the, the Liberal government, of course, has been, has been keen to, um, in the beginning already, uh, when we had the other Premier, and his name has escaped me for the moment, but. In the beginning, we had this idea that local government was going to be sort of downplayed, you know, given less, uh, less say and uh, watered down by amalgamations, basically. Mm -hmm. I think there is a point uh, for amalgamations uh, in, in with, city, with some city councils, but not in an area like this. This is a large area and I think uh, they, I can't see anything wrong with Wyong and Gosford to be reinstated as councils which have, uh, as far as I know, uh, not ever been a, a financial problem. Mm. The financial problem, um, if we go back to that, and the councillors, the 15 councillors uh, were elected uh, to oversee uh, the amalgamation and 
also to, uh, to run the council policy. Those, um, those councillors didn't seem to see uh, the, the financial problems um, coming until uh, really mid to late last year. Yeah. How, how, do you, uh, how do you see that? Well, you know, from what I've been reading is that they only came to know about this seriously uh, in October last year. Yes, this, uh, th this is as far as I know. So, so in other words, you can, you can hardly blame the councillors for, for any of this. Because before that, apparently the, the, the details that they got from the, uh, from the, uh, from the administrators were, um, I, I heard about a line missing, a line of millions of dollars missing. How can this be? So in other words, from, from what you are saying, it, it seems that the councillors really are not to blame. Mm. And, and uh, so that they should be shoved aside in some way or other, I think is, it makes no sense to me. Well, perhaps the public inquiry uh, may uh, bring that to the surface. Though the councillors did uh, did engage on a on a on an expansive um, series of um, policies. Apparently, they uh, agreed to the employment of an extra two hundred and fifty people or so, um, when arguably a, an amalgamation should uh, should have reduced that um, staff ratio. Uh, so they must have some, have had some idea of, of that sort of uh, that sort of expansion in the budget. Yeah, I suppose so. Well, I, I'm I'm not sufficiently familiar mm. uh, to to make really a, an, an, uh, a totally responsible uh, answer to that one. But it, it's it seemed to me that um, that the the uh, you know that the main problem was budgetary mismanagement, mm -hmm. and and that the council came to know about is very late in the piece. The so hardly a, a hardly a case for councillors to be sacked. The executive, that that is to say, the directors and senior management, uh, seem to have um, come out of this relatively unscathed, except of course for the uh, the former CEO who was. Um, he who was stood aside, yeah. but, but with a healthy payout, it yes. would suggest that there wasn't anything um, uh, there wasn't anything illegal or untoward about it. Do you think that this inquiry will perhaps bring some of the focus of uh, the mismanagement on some of the uh, the management structures? Um, possibly, yeah. I I would I would hope so. Really, um, <coughs> the other thing is, of course, that <coughs> as I said earlier. The <coughs> local government in our federal system is a responsibility of the of the state governments, and so the fund that the state government had actually uh, put together to assist amalgamations mm -hmm. was uh, stopped uh, because uh, they stopped doing amalgamations. There were apparently a lot of people who were not happy about it. There were court cases, expenses and so on, so they stopped with it. And I would have thought, you know, that uh, the shortage of uh, more than half a billion here uh, could have been uh, reduced at least by using some of that money. Mm -hmm. But what I hear from uh, David Schubert, so the Green, in the Green um, Member of Parliament, is that this, this money has actually gone uh, to various um, Liberal Party seats or marginal seats, so to be politically effective, uh, 95 per cent. Mm. This has not been questioned, it seems to be correct. This is unbelievable how this, can, how this kind of pork barreling can happen with money that is meant for amalgamations. Mm. And when, an, when, an, when a two councils are in trouble like this, then I, I would have thought, that money could at least have been helped uh, to, you know, to make the balance right. Klaus, you've, you've lived in various parts of the world and um, under or alongside some, uh, some uh, let's say, authoritarian uh, regimes. I have to ask this question. Do you, do you, see, do you see this stir of change um, uh, encouraging that sort of behaviour in the yes. future? Yes, I do. It is usually a slow process. I have seen this in South Africa in the early 60s, uh, how the uh, Afrikaner government gradually um, became stronger and, um, and more determined to push through their apartheid policy. It was a gradual process 
and uh, the opposition there at the time, which was of course all white at the time, uh, was ineffective. This is actually why apartheid was able to emerge and, and, and continue uh, for such a long time. So um, I think the time, the time has come for Australians to say, we need to have a look at what has actually happened in the sphere of governance. Mm. And uh, you can read in my book about it, because mm. how to improve democracy is the title of the book. I'm making a lot of suggestions there. And one suggestion, for instance, is, is that we should have a different electoral system. An electoral system that is not based on single member districts, mm. where pork barreling and branch decking and mm. so sort of are all possible where it is also possible to have a safe seat and nothing happens in such a seat for donks. Mm. Uh, I have lived in, uh, in Lismore mm. for 22 years and I've seen what the continued, um, st continued support of the National Party in safe seats mm. actually does for a region. So um, this can happen here too. And uh, there comes a point that um, well, hopefully a major party or some other party that might emerge, who knows. Uh, we've seen enough of this. We can do much better. So let's have a look. That's what the book is about. Mm. I've read um, much of the book and effectively it would appear that you're appealing to a, uh, a more Western European model with uh, a more diverse representation um, inside it. Where yes the voters are on the ground, the citizens on the ground are more reflected yes. in the parliament. Is that a fair summary? Yeah, it's a fair summary. And, and also you have to say that proportional representation has been accepted by almost all countries after decolonization. Mm -hmm. And after 1990, all um, except one or two maybe, but around 20 countries that became independent in Europe immediately adopted proportional representation. Mm. It means that you have a more diverse parliament. It means that you have an, an, uh, an parliament that, that is not adversarial, mm. that is not spending a God knows how much time on, uh, on, on criticizing the other mob, mm. you know, which we see all the time. We already see it again coming back now, you know, that um, that the treasurer says, oh, well, you know, finally we've paid off the, uh, the, Lab the Labour Party debt uh, and nonsense like this. A lot of time is spent on that. This had, does not happen in, in governments that are, that, that ha that are put together mm. because people have to compromise on their own platforms to form a majority government. Mm. We don't have majority governments, you know. That, that is the thing that we have a majority. At the moment, of course, we have a conservative government that is actually dominated by the right wing of the Liberal Party and does not represent more than 30% of the population. Well, that is, a, that is an interesting call. Australia, while we have you here, Australia was, of course, um, the, the, the experimental demo democratic ground when it, was, uh, it came together in 1901 with the... The, uh, the vote for, for women and in fact in some states even the vote for um, Aboriginals before that was crushed and uh, the votes in public organisations and so on. What, what's, what do you think's happened to, yeah. to that great Australian experimentation that the world looked to? Well, you were quite right. The beginning was very promising. Mm. Uh, and uh, then of course the, the electoral systems came about in 1918 and uh, some amendments in 1924. And from then onwards, of course, you, you, you have the two party system definitely um, consolidating itself. And, and this is a problem, the two party system, it, um, um, which I've described in the book why it is a problem and it has become more of a problem uh, after the Second World War. So. Um, a lot of things have not changed. One of the things that hasn't changed as a result of this, for instance, is the Constitution. Mm. The Constitution is absolutely archaic in, in, um, in Australia. And uh, attempts to amend it in terms of Section 128 have all basically all failed. Only six or seven or so have, have gone through out of a large number. 44 have failed. <coughs> um, this, this is bad news that we are settled with a constitution that is so archaic. 
it's the result of the electoral system. People don't see that connection uh, much, you know, that this has something to do with it. But unless the two major parties um, agree on an amendment, it won't get through. Mm. That is the story. And so, uh, even, uh, you know, the Uluru statement, for instance, one of the things that uh, Turnbull said, oh, you know, this, uh, people will see this as a third chamber and so on, and it would be very difficult to get it through in the Constitution. Rightly so. So governments stay away from doing something about the Constitution. This is wrong. Mm. You know, compare this with New Zealand, mm. where the Constitution can, I think, change by ordinary majority. Mm. You know, they, ha they don't have this problem. Uh, they don't have a problem with their electoral system anymore either. They have adopted proportional representation. Mm.